Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> hi, hello, hi, hi. Hey, nope, that sounds crazy. Hey there, it's Amy, and in today's video, we are going to take a look back at February and my Hobonichi cousin. I am in big back journal mode. February, though she is the shortest month, she was pretty cruel. Move over April, February really punched me in the face emotionally, <laughs> which is why this video is once again coming to you a little bit later than I would prefer, but I don't even know, I don't even know why I say that because the internet is forever and I don't know when you're watching this. You could be watching this 18 years from now. That sent me into a spiral. No, let's not, let's not talk about that. Why don't we just get into it, shall we? <laughs> why don't I cut this intro short and we just actually look at the month of February and my Hobonichi cousin. That sounds pretty good, don't you think? First up, as always, is the period tracker. You know, self-explanatory. <laughs> you may notice a slight change. <laughs> You're learning a lot about my period, huh? After that, we've got the workout tracker. I'm still really enjoying this. I like to go in and fill it out. I really like that I include the time of the class I go to and then some notes about everything. You'll hear more about this in the March wrap up, but I like spelled Elaine's name wrong. I've only written it for 10 years. It's fine, I spelled it wrong on this and I'm kind of devastated that it like, it just stands out to me so bad. You know, it's one of those things that's like, you're gonna see it every single time you look at it, but no one else would probably see it until you point it out to them and now I've pointed it out to you and it's all you're ever gonna see. Yeah, it's one of those things. But still really enjoying this. Have hit 12 January and February, so I'm very proud about that. I have new, yeah, I got new brush pens. If you watched the Week in My Life vlog that I did, I went to an art supply store and picked up one, two, three new brush pens. So I added them on the month pages. I like to do a snapshot of the day, like just a quick idea. Sometimes it's very abstract, like candy salad is my everything. And other times it's super specific, like having dinner with a friend or Super Bowl Sunday or whatever. I like having just these days fully filled in. Um, so I can like always kind of look back on it because for instance, I have 2023 right here. I can say like, okay, like February 20th, I didn't have a great day. I and mean, let's see how it was last year. Wouldn't that be hilarious if it also wasn't a great day? February 20th. Yeah, shipped mugs, post office was closed, cozy day, I skipped the gym, and I got drinks with my friend Kelsey. I would say a way better day than the one that I had this year. But I like being able to do that, right? Like it's just a fun reference. I would never remember that that happened if I didn't jot it down on these pages. So pretty much really enjoy these even though they are just straight up words. Now getting into the weeks here, I have pretty much changed entirely how I use my weeks pages. If you remember back from the January flip through, I started out doing a report, which is a TikTok trend that I brought to my journal that means reading, eating, playing, obsessed, recommending, and treat. And it was really fun, but I tend to do the same things a lot. So it was not super helpful in terms of like, it wasn't super helpful on a weekly basis. I think maybe once a month doing a report could be really fun. And maybe that takes place on my daily pages. I pretty, I let this go pretty quickly because I realized that I was just repeating myself a lot and that I wasn't enjoying it as much as I used or as much as I thought that I would. So when I left the report behind, I started treating these weekly pages as like more of a um, daily catch up in a way where I'm telling you what happened on that day. So I'm getting more specific about some things like this, whatever, we already talked about that. We already talked about that. Why am I telling you all that? If you want to know why I did this, go to the January flip through. I'll put it up in the cards. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, so I, all this to say, I'm just doing that again, and I'm finding what works here. I do find myself spending a lot of time on these in a way that I wish I were not doing. I'm pretty behind on back journaling, and I think a lot of that is because I accidentally get very carried away on these. And it's fun, but it's not where I want to be spending, like, all of my time. So I'm doing like collage style. I've shouted her out before, but Kayla, her last name is I think Rivoli, but I always say ravioli in my head. 
So sorry about that, Kayla, but I got this idea from her, like collage style about the week. She does it a lot differently than this. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked, but all of this to say, <laughs> my God, this is where I started doing more of a daily snapshot vertically and doing some illustrations, doing some lettering, just having fun, getting bits about the day down. I lost water at my studio for a day, which was super frustrating because I was like on a big deadline. I needed to get stuff done. And then Elaine and I did <laughs> what is still re referred to as the unnamed reading challenge weekend. We basically, when we were at our, when we were at our date night the Wednesday before, she was like, what if we just read a bunch this weekend and didn't watch TV? Like, what if we replaced our screen time with reading? And I was like, cool, can I film like a video for it? Cause I'm trying to do more like reading vlogs and stuff. Cause I really enjoy watching those. And she was like, yeah, sure. And I mean, spoiler alert, like we didn't get that far reading wise, but it was still fun. And I'm still now at the end of March, still editing that video. Whoops. The next week I definitely like heavier words, as you can see, I have fun with these like oval blobs and, and like lettering inside those almost as like a header or a way to like differentiate um, words from other words. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's a lot of words. It's not as many words as you're about to see. Is it this next one? Yeah. It's a lot of words. It's a lot of color. It's a little chaotic. I don't hate it but I still haven't found exactly what I'm looking for yet with this. And then there's this. <laughs> I had a big week here and I guess I just had a lot of things I wanted to get out. I think my favorite part on this, on this spread, I like having this Instagram story that I uploaded because it was just like silly and fun. Um, I used the other half of my Canon Ivy sheet. You know, you can like collage it and like two pictures on one sheet. The other half I just used for a selfie because I got my hair done. And yeah, very word heavy. I think I would like to do it a little bit differently, like maybe having these Tombow letterheads breaking up the column a little better. I don't know. I was definitely watching traders at the same time as doing this. And I think I just let all my anxious energy about like if Phaedra was gonna get caught really pour into this page <laughs> but it's fun I mean I like these bits for Kelsey's wedding that's nice and then I had a pretty shit week sorry pg-13 um and I it took me a long time to fill this in because things have just been hard and um, trying to juggle like work and feelings and things like that at, at once has been difficult. So whereas it may have started out like with a purpose, it just, I just sort of needed to get this week done. So my mom had a heart attack. Um, I spent the week pretty much just like having feelings and trying to distract myself. So that's all that happened. And we ordered um, my favorite takeout. <laughs> I don't, I, I remember taking this off the bag and being like, oh, I'll stick it on the week and do something with it. And then it just turned into not really doing anything with it. And that's okay. Uh, and then this goes into March a bit, but so I guess I'll just talk about this side of the page. <laughs> this is a little bit closer to what I want to be doing, which is like, like not so many words, not so many like huge paragraphs of like what is happening. Um, and more just like snapshots about the week. A lot, all of this stuff actually was pulled from my Instagram archive. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check my back journaling video. I talk a lot about how I use my Instagram story archives to help me remember what happened at the week when I'm back journaling. So all of this truly was like pulled from my Instagram stories. So it's like a lot of memes, a lot of like um, DMs I didn't want to forget and just little bits. And I think it's fun. So Jace, my nephew, I'll put up this picture here. He's been fishing like a ton at my parents' house and he has figured out where the bass are nesting or something. I'm like not a fisherman. And he is just like reeling them in one after the other, having the time of his life. And Elaine and I did a buddy read of Christina Lauren's The True Love Experiment. And that was super fun. And this is 
a meme account I found that does these like really like graphic designy word poems I guess you could call it and so I'm having fun like sharing those in my story and like switching it up a little bit the original post said while you make moves in silence I'm banging on pots and pans and I text overlaid on top of it in my stories and said while you're making moves in silence I am posting on my stories like a lot I am <laughs> Um, and then this last thing here, just to explain this. Maybe you care, maybe you don't. It's okay, you can plus 15. Can you tell I'm having a hard time? It's fine. I do these word of the year mugs. They are custom. You you pick your colors, you pick your word, and I let you pick an illustration. And I completely forgot that I added the option to have these starbursts that I like to do added to the mug. And so I'm like flipping through orders and I keep seeing these people requesting starburst. And I have asterisks and I have stars. Yeah, I have those two, but like they're not called starburst. So I'm emailing these people being like, hey there. Not really sure what you're talking about. Like, if you could elaborate, sometimes people go off script, you know. So, I think these people have gone off script and just both somehow have chosen Starburst. And so, I'm sending them, like, a polite but, I think, forward email being like, hey, that wasn't on the list, you know. And thank God before one of them responded, I actually, like, you know, went back to the listing that I myself wrote and saw, oh, there, there is an option for Starburst. So I have to email these people back and be like, hey, I'm so sorry. I'm actually stupid and forgot I added that. I will add your Starburst to your mug today. So that's what they look like. But yeah, definitely sending the email. What do you mean by Starbursts? And then realizing that was super fun. So all in all, I'm enjoying the way this is looking. It is still taking a second to sort of figure out what it is. And I'm realizing now that what I like... <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> what I'm realizing now with you, what I like about this is that it's not stuck to a column. They're not bound to a certain day. It's just all around the page. Whereas these are very much bound to the day. And I'm feeling a little too locked into that. So that is something good to have realized together. So thank you for that. All right, let's move into the dailies. All right. I'm still not doing anything with these pages. I should figure it out. I should figure it out. Y'all give me such good ideas and I still just can't get there. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think everything is so jam packed that I get to these and I'm just like, what could possibly go here? There's a million pictures of me in this book. There's a million like <laughs> illustrations of what I'm up to, a million words. So I don't know, goals maybe, but I'm so far behind bag journaling. Like just to give you an idea, this is bad. I'm going to spend a lot of today back journaling. This is all I've done for March. It is March 24th. So anyway, I'll get there eventually. Maybe at the end of the year, I'll go back and like write out what my favorite things were. Don't hold me to that. Anyway, first of the month, I have a subscription service for Paint Your Own Pottery Studios. It's called Y'all Stars. I send out projects that I design, marketing photos, all that good stuff. So typically the first of every month, you'll see um, me reference those in some way. So sometimes it's just an illustration. Sometimes it's the actual picture. This one I was really proud of. I mean, I'm proud of all of them, but this one went like really well. I got a lot of good feedback on it. So I wanted to not just draw it in here. I wanted to actually put the picture in. And I'm using my yellow paper house papers. This is from the pad. I really like just ripping them out and keeping the like texture at the top and just pasting that in. And I don't know, I just think it's so fun. So that's what that is. <laughs> um, after that, I've got illustrations from the word of the year mugs that I'm working on. This is taken from, this is what it actually looks like on my work surface when I'm in the studio. I take each mug and when I finish like each section of it, so I like do the background and then I do the inside and then I letter and then I splatter, but I'm always keeping their order form or I'm always keeping it rolled up in the mug so I don't lose track of what's what because they're all totally custom. I wanted to illustrate that. I had dinner with my friend Catherine and I just have a note here that like she is so easy to love and be around and she really grounds me in a very like specific way because I've known her for so long. I've known her through so many different versions of 
me of her. It's just really nice to to go to dinner with someone that's known you for 15 years. So just a quick like love note for Catherine. And then here is the unnamed <laughs> reading challenge, the to be determined name reading challenge. We still have not gotten there. And I basically just am giving you the rules like no ish screens. We've, we did say like if we complete a chore that's like over like 10 minutes or whatever that we've been putting off, we could earn screen time. So we did that a couple times, but anyway, we did it on the next day as well. And I just kind of like did a little snapshot of what, what else we did. Like we went to our favorite place, Ria's for breakfast. We had plans with our friend Josh that we canceled. Sorry about that. Elaine did homework. I back journaled a lot. I finished my audiobook for book club, which was, um, oh, you'll see it. I'm so confused on what day it is because <laughs> I just finished back journaling February. It's end of March. I'm pre-planning for summer. Like I have no idea what day it is anyway. And the Grammys were that night and we actually watched like a lot of it, if not all of it. I love that on this reading challenge, it's like, look at all these things that we did were not reading related. We really failed. Anyway, this is my Valentine's Day manicure. Dedicated a whole page to it because it was just that good. Oh, and this is the book we read. I was right. Um, we did the very the very secret society of irregular witches at my friend Kelsey's house, and it was so fun. I really like illustrating book covers, and I did this with my Tombow, my mild liners, and then my Posca pens. That neon yellow is just everything to me. And then just like a quick note about book club that, that night. We had breakfast for dinner and it was just so good. And we're in Kelsey's new house and we're just like in her dining room all gathered around the table. And it was just so nice. Like when they come here, they like, you know, they eat at this table, but there's seven of us. So some of us are at this table. Some of us are on the couch around the coffee table. So I do like to document it when, when I'm just noticing like this is really nice. So I, I snuck a picture and then... Just wrote on the back here, like, breakfast for dinner was so good because it just was. It, it always hits, you know? Here I have a custom connections. If you go to, it's like connections.snarfo. I'll put it up on the screen. I'll put it right here. But you can build your own connections game if you don't know, if you're somehow under a rock. The New York Times, one of the games that they have, out now that's taking everyone by storm is a game called Connections. You group together four uh, similar things. Like you have to guess what the, what the pairings are. They're always gonna try to confuse you. Elaine made me a custom Connections full of like our inside jokes and it was so cute and fun. And I just like documenting that. I must have posted. I do try to dedicate like a page to the day I post a YouTube video. So this must have been the day that it actually went up. Um, I remember doing this page while I was watching the Mother God documentary and I got like really sucked into it. And so I think this page like really <laughs> I spent like a long time on it because I was just like so zeroed in on the TV, but I love the way it turned out. It's like truly everything that I use, my Canon Ivy, my Tombow tape runners, my scissors, my yellow paper house pads, stickers, Poscas, my black wing, my Tombows, washi tape, like I just think it's so cute. So I'm happy with that. This is something that I, it, this is just so cute to me. I got this idea from Amanda Loves Pins on Instagram. I'm not totally firm on why she has a million post-it notes. I think she used to sell them. And so she has like all this like back stock of post-it notes. And she's got these journals where she's like done all these cool things with post-it notes. And she's flipping through in her stories one day. And I am just screenshotting like crazy because there was such good inspiration in there. And so in her journal, these, the colors you see are actually post-it notes, like all different sizes. And she's taking her black pen and like making it look like a notebook or like something is paper clipped or the binder clip or tape or a thumbtack. And it's just so, so cute. She's the best. I love watching her stuff and I love watching her reviews of pens. Like she's got me really wanting those Sharpie pens that just came out that are like, they're, I think they're paint pens, but they have that brush tip. They are stunning and I have to have them. So thanks, Amanda. And I always, when I get inspiration from somebody like that, I always include them on the page because I didn't come up with this, duh. And I don't want to forget. 
And in two years when I'm flipping back through this, God forbid if I've forgotten about Amanda, which I won't, I'll see her and I'll be like, oh, let me, you know, let me go back and, and see what Amanda's up to. So I, I like having that. And then of course we've got Housewives. Um, this is when Erica Jane and the girls were in Spain and Sutton has brought Merce, Merce's ashes. And Erica gets drunk and she's saying, Merce is in the purse. And yes, I spelled Merce wrong. It's supposed to be with a C. I am devastated. But instead of fixing it, I'm just leaving it because I think it would be like way too distracting if I tried to like cut out a C or something and like whatever. Merce is in the purse. That's all that matters. This is just so fun for me. Like I love doing illustrations. This is a mixture of Tombows and mild liners and uh, like a white paint pen. I still can't get any white gel pen to work for me. So I'm always just using white paint pens for like little highlights and things like that. Merce is in the purse. I hate to tell you, Merce is in the purse. Another video you can watch, please watch, please, is the reading vlog I did for the Amazon original short stories. The collection is called The Improbable Meat Cute, Valentine's themed short stories by like, you know, our favorite romance authors. And this is, this is like the marketing that they used, like these almost like paper hearts. Um, and what I did is just cut out little covers essentially and rated them here. So in the video, I actually, you see me read them, you see me rank them and talk about them a little bit more. And this is just like a quick reference. So the best one for me was The Worst Wingman Ever. That was by Abby Jimenez. I can't believe I didn't write who wrote these on here. Like that's a, that seems crazy to me. Like what a weird oversight. But anyway, Abby Jimenez's The Worst Wingman Ever was the highest rated one for me. And the lowest rated one for me was Royal Valentine by Soraya Wilson, I think is her name. Like really bad. This is a funny thing to me. I was dedicating a page to like how I'm feeling really good at the gym right now. I'm feeling like very strong. I'm feeling still like I'm enjoying it more than ever. And that I'm able to take steps that I haven't been able to take before, like higher progressions and higher weights and things like that. On this day, yeah, I went to a noon workout on that day. I don't know why, or I had, oh, I do know why. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I had late meetings. I normally like to go to the gym at night, but I had really late meetings on this day. So I, I went ahead and went at noon. And what happened was I got confused about which class this was. So actually like two weeks ago, I went to a noon class. The coach gave me like an incredible compliment in the middle of working out. Can I just tell you what it was? I'll tell you what it was. We were doing these this move where you carry a kettlebell like upside down. It's like racked and upside down. I, the thing is, is I go to the gym and they say, do the thing. And I, and at the gym, I understand what the thing is. But then when I leave and I try to talk about whatever move that was, I'm like, I don't know that thing that's that that's called that stuff. Like, I don't remember. Anyway, you have a kettlebell, it's upside down, you're holding it by the handle, but the heavy part is up here and you like walk up and down the gym. So it's like balance and strength because you have to hold your arm a certain way. Anyway, whatever. I was doing it with a certain weight and the coach came up to me and she was like, that's a really heavy weight for that. Like you're doing a really good job. And I was so proud of myself. And then instantly the second she told me that the weight just started feeling so heavy because she told me it was a heavy weight. You know what I mean? You know when that happens? So that's funny. But anyway, I wanted to like commemorate that moment because I was really proud of myself. But then I stuck this picture down and I started writing and I realized that's not the same day. And I like, I could have just faked it, but this is my thing. Like, why am I faking it in my own thing? So I had actually started, you can see, oh yeah. <laughs> I started writing just directly on this like light purple piece of paper, but I was watching TV at the same time. And I wrote, I went to the gym, if you can see. And so I had to tape a piece of paper on top of it. because I was like, I can't, <laughs> there's no coming back from went. I went to the gym. Yeah, so I just, a quick note about that. But I wanted to say I was feeling proud. Whatever. I can't talk about it. I just, I wish this were different. <laughs> Still proud of myself. Wish it were different. And then we're getting to the Valentine's Day of it all. Oh, that is fully my address. My friend Tiffany sends just the best mail you've ever seen. And she decorates the envelopes like very cutely. So I always like to keep them. This is her address. So I taped in the envelope. And then I've actually got her Valentine's Day card in here really not trying to show both of our addresses. <laughs> 
So I like keeping it stuck in there. I got a lot of Valentine's this Valentine's Day, no brag. And I wanted to put them all in here, but like I'm running out of space. So I did something like literally so crazy where I've got these like flip outs, but like a double flip out. Listen, I don't know, I don't suggest it, but I got to save the stamps in here. There's another little Valentine's right there. This is from the candy that I got from Elaine's parents. This is from Tiffany, cause she is also a freak like me. But yeah, just a fun little like Galentine's Day page basically, because these are all the, the ones I got from my friends. Then of course, actual Valentine's Day. This is cute. These are my new papers from Yellow Paper House. I just pulled like all the bright fun ones and stuck them down and put pictures on top. Hello? Elaine just came out of her enclosure, AKA the bedroom where I have banished her but she has her headphones in so she can't hear me. Anyway, um, for Valentine's Day, we went to see Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812. I was like, full disclosure, not really looking forward to it, <laughs> but it was actually amazing. We had a really good time. Um, so before that, we grabbed dinner at like the dive bar up the street. So even though it was like nothing special, they still had like flowers and a candle on the table, which was really cute. But we read our book and we ate our food and then went to see the show. And it was actually so good, so fun. I took apart the, um, what's this thing called? The program, the bill, whatever. I took it apart and I glued this in before, like two weeks before I even got to this page. And so looking back, like I kind of regret including this in here because I also just don't like love the way it looks, but I liked having this because it was a good reference and it matches like the song that they sing in the beginning, whatever. I just thought it was cute. The day after Valentine's Day, I did my last shift at the hair store, which is what we call it when I go and get my hair done because I'm there for like six or seven hours. And I'm at a point where like I need a change. I am getting, okay, so I used to have really long hair, really long, really long hair. And I, it was like such an emotional, like, security blanket for me. I was convinced that I was like only beautiful because I had really long hair and that like, that I could be fat, but my hair was really long. So it was like distracting everyone from my body shape. I mean, these are the things that you tell yourself. So I cut all my hair off and took back my beauty or whatever. And then um, my hair started getting darker because that happens when you age. And I was having an absolute crisis because I'm like, I'm blonde. And everyone's like, mm. and I'm like, no, but I'm blonde. And they're like, so I had always kind of like played around with being like platinum anyway, whatever. So <laughs> because anyway, I can't get into it because it's like just so many insecurities piled on top of each other. Anyway, went platinum for like to October of this year will have been three years and it is expensive. It is time consuming it is so fun and I really love it. I mean, I hate spending that much money and that much time at the salon every month, but um, I love the way it looks, <laughs> love the way it looks. But I am finding that over the past year while I'm starting to feel really comfortable with myself and really proud of myself and really like the way I look, I'm starting to worry that I am thinking I am only beautiful because I have interesting hair. So I need to let it go. It's it's just another one of those things where I'm putting entirely too much stock in hair equals beauty. Hair equals like hiding your body. So anyway, long-winded way to say that this was my last shift at the hair store. I'm really sad to see it go. It's like when it starts getting like past this phase where it's like, like the color's really gone and, and it's looking like bad. I'm like, oh, I hate this. I'm so ready to be done with this. And then I get it touched up and I'm like, okay, but wait, this is incredible. I look amazing. So it's, it's going to be difficult. It really is. Like even yesterday I was looking in the mirror and I was like, man, I'm really going to miss this, but I don't know why I'm acting like I can never do it again. <sighs> anyway, so selfie to commemorate my, my last pink hair. And then the next day, I had a really bad day. Um, I got in a bit of a car accident. It was totally my fault. I was, I just, 
made one stupid mistake. Hey, that's all it takes. I don't know if you knew that. It's just one stupid mistake. I was pulling out of a parking spot, like a parallel parking spot, and I just went without looking. I was in the middle of telling a story about my nephew Jace fishing, and I just didn't look pulled out of the spot and a car hit, hit, ran into me. I was in the car's way, they ran into me. And this driver got out of the car, screamed me down, cussed me out, like it was really bad. I have never had someone, like a stranger scream at me. Uh, anyway, it was really bad. Glad everybody's safe. I'm having a hard time like trusting myself now, driving wise. Like sometimes I'll, I'll be in the car with Elaine who was with me at the time. And I'll just get this feeling that like, I, like it's anxiety. I just get anxious that I'm gonna make another stupid mistake. And so she's been driving a lot lately. But, and I can't stress how like low key this was. Could have been so much worse. I was going one miles per hour and the lady beside me was going like a little too fast for the street. Could have been so much worse. I'm glad everybody's healthy. This is what insurance is for. But anyway, I, yeah, so we were on the way up to Wilmington for my friend Kelsey's wedding. While being pretty emotionally exhausted by the whole event, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to put this in my Hobonichi. <laughs> and I did that. So I drew the cars. I drew my car, I drew her car, and then I crumpled. You can't really see because I've been keeping the pages, like, you know, turned and stuff. But I crumpled up the ends where they hit. <laughs> just a little collision nice little collision um, but I really like that and then of course I didn't want to just dedicate I didn't want to this is Kelsey's wedding day I didn't want to just ruin it with the car situation so I've got a little so I've got a little pocket in here for her wedding program and then a picture of book club on the pocket so Next day I is just kind of a recap of everything. Pictures of me and Elaine at the wedding and an overview of it. I didn't, again, I didn't want this like very frustrating wreck to overshadow everything. So dedicated this page to just like how much fun we had and how happy I am for Kelsey and everything. Day after that, um, I dedicated this page to the push-up challenge that we had at the gym. This is, I just like something locked into place for me. I mean, that's what challenges are for, I guess. We've been doing one minute of push-ups um, after the warm-up all month long in February. In January, we did one minute squat holds. So February was push-ups. And I consistently did 18, at least 18 for for the minute every single time. And I was able to lower down a progression. So it's a yoga block laid on its side instead of tall, which is what I used to do. So I don't know, I was just really proud of myself and I wanted to take a second to talk about that here because it's hard for me sometimes to remember that I am progressing or whatever. I turned in a project <laughs> on the 20th that was due before the 20th. Um, so I finally got that turned in and it's super cute. I'll pop up a picture of it here so you can see them side by side. And on this day, technically actually on this day, my mom went to the ER and then on Tuesday, no, that's a lie. On Tuesday, my mom went to the ER. And then on Wednesday, we found out that she'd had a heart attack. Um, and, you know, it's my dad calling me to tell me, like, you know, just, everything's fine. Like, she's just going to stay in the hospital and they're going to do this stuff. Like, just just go about your normal day. And it was a Wednesday. And I, on Wednesdays, I film my YouTube videos. And I had to cut out so much crying from that January flip through video because I had my computer open for updates and just to be able to see if something's happening while I'm using my phone to record. And, and so I'm just like getting texts from people and um, I just cut out so much crying. <laughs> I was going to leave it in, but I was like, that is, well, is potentially going to make someone really uncomfortable. So I cut it out. But anyway, I'm just saying here, like it feels weird and bad to be normal and film a YouTube video after finding out your mama had a heart attack. And then in the back, just some journaling that just says, I'm worried over and over and over again, because I'm worried. Uh, and things really, to be honest with you, from here onward, really start falling off for me and start getting really tough. I feel behind in a way on a lot of aspects of my life more than ever because I just really emotionally shut down when things get really difficult like this, especially like 
with my parents when my parents get sick. It's very hard. And so I really shut down this week. Um, you, I think you also see in the back journaling video I did, like a lot of this stuff was not filled in yet. Like we go in together and like we really try to pull some stuff out, but I had shut down for this week. So I don't, I didn't do much of anything. It was like a lot of like sitting and staring at the wall, doom scrolling, stuff like that. So I just got this week finished filling in and sometimes it looks like writing that things are really hard at the moment and putting some swirly roses up there. Other times it's a, a traitor's meme of CT and Phaedra. It's from House of Bravo right here and it says, gonna tell my kids this was Jack and Rose. So funny, never not funny. In the back journaling video, we did this page together. It is one of my favorite pages so far in, in the year. It is uh, dedicated to the new video I put up and I just really like it. It's exactly what it looks like when I'm sitting on my couch looking at the TV. The next day I went to a Beyonce drag brunch with some friends of mine and <laughs> I used my yellow paper house notebook or note notepads to make this falling money because these girls were really making it rain and I love this page. I think it's fun. I hate this. I was just telling Elaine this yesterday. I hate this. It's fine. Now you know. Here I've got just my phone and this was an Instagram story that I shared. Um, I'm still not used to saying the word thread. It's like, I just want to call it a tweet, but I'm not on Twitter. But anyway, this was a thread that I posted that says me trying to flirt. I saw the Hives tour the album Tyrannosaurus Hives at the Old Masquerade in 2004 on a school night. If you're from Atlanta, that will mean something to you. If you're 33 years old, that will mean something to you. Um, but anyway, it just made me laugh. So again, this week was hard. I'm trying to pull the things that are not just like, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm worried, I'm nervous, I'm sick to my stomach about everything that's happening. And I just went for silly. So that is, this is ultimate silly. On this day or the next day or something, I finished The True Love Experiment, um, which was a book Elaine and I were reading together. So I, initially I just tried to illustrate the cover, but the cover of that book is very like bright colors and ombre and there's fireworks in the background. And I did, I struggled and I actually, you can see a little bit like I had originally started to draw it behind. I think you can probably maybe see that. And it just got really bad. So I just covered it with a piece of paper. So this is essentially like my Kindle view. Just go with it, okay? Um, this is what Elaine and I call ourselves. So if you ever see it in the journal anywhere, like that's just her pet name for each other. Um, it does feel weird and something that is personally mine to call her Elaine over and over again because I do not, I, tr I really don't say her name unless I'm we're like fighting. <laughs> so occasionally I have to like actually not write Elaine. I tried to do the ombre without actually like no paints out, you know, just paper. Here we're talking about word of the year mugs. Elaine has been a huge help getting those out and helping me with those. And while they are trying to kill me because especially this round, like so many things have been happening with my parents. Spoiler, spoiler alert, my dad is also now sick. Um, that it was just, I lost like a week and a half of work because it was just too hard to go. I know that sounds like like, why can't you just get it together kind of thing? But yeah, I just, I would go and it would, everything that I would I was doing just looked bad. So I needed to take some time. Anyway, but she's been an, an, an incredible help, super supportive. And I just needed to dedicate a page to that. And then of course, it was a leap year. So I had to, to give a page to Leap Day William, which of course everyone knows who Leap Day William is. He lives in the Mariana Trench. He only comes out on the leap day. He's wearing blue and yellow and he passes out candy to children, but they have to cry to get it. You don't know who Leap Day William is? That's crazy. It's just something from 30 Rock, my favorite television show of all time. Highly recommend that episode, by the way, just as a one-off, it's incredible. But Kenneth here is dressed as Leap Day William, and I had I just pulled out one of my favorite quotes from the episode, Real Life is for March. <laughs> Great episode. Candy in the background, tears in the background, crying emojis. What can I say? I actually had a really great leap day. It was like stressful with my parents and stuff, but I had dinner with some old friends and we were the loudest people in the restaurant, which like any other time I'd be like, 
guys, guys, be quiet. But we were just having such a fun time eating pizza, telling stories, laughing, laughing, laughing. Really, really great day. I'm happy that that's how I used my leap day for the year. Anyway, so that is February. I don't think there's anything back here I need to show you. No, I don't think so. February. Woo! It's Sunday. Again, if you were paying attention, ow, scratched myself. I like to record on Wednesdays, but I'm so far behind that I had a, like, a spare hour that I thought I would do this today. Um, so I'm going to spend, while it's daylight, I'm going to spend as much time as I can kind of back journaling March because as you saw, I'm only a page in. But yeah, I mean, she's getting pretty chunky. compared I'm doing a lot more than I was doing last year so I'm a little bit nervous about <laughs> what she's gonna look like um but yeah I'm still loving everything about this journey I will tell you just in case you're following me on Instagram and you know that I have a five-year journal for also from Hobonichi I'm struggling with that one so much more <laughs> and it is definitely because things are hard right now and I don't always want to sit down and like talk about hard things when it is all I'm thinking about non-stop so I really do need to sit down and catch up and to that before it gets out of control because if it gets out of control I'm not gonna be able to keep up with it I'm gonna feel like I failed so I really need to sit down today that's my goal for the day is back journal some in here and then put some time into my five year and I, I'll need to do the five year first or I'll just never do it so my reward for filling in the five year is going to be back journaling in March so I hope to get that video out pretty soon <laughs> I like to think about it as like, well, everybody gets their flip through out, you know, in the first week of the month. And, you know, you'll be bored if I start putting mine out the first week of the month as well. Like, it's a nice surprise, right? That like you get, <laughs> you're getting my February flip through in the last days of March, right? Please say yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Everyone has been so kind in the comments and I just really appreciate that, especially around this time with my family. I think all the time like how glad I am that I am documenting this, documenting this. I'm just finding so much joy in all of this. So thank you so, so much for sticking with me and being excited and um, tagging me on Instagram when you try stuff or when you're watching me or, it's just the best. So I am so, so grateful. And I look forward to doing this again very soon. <laughs> Knock on wood. Very soon going to get through everything and get a new video up. So thank you. I love you. I hope you're having the best day. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.